Hey everybody, welcome back. So today's lecture is for Wednesday, the 18th of March. Yeah, I just had to look at the date. It's already that bad. Um, I hope you guys are doing really well. And this lecture today is all about character. So let me start this for you. So I'll just recap that tonight your podcast and video game assignment is due and I've already gotten several of those turned in. So good job. Friday you have the film review um, to turn in and just make sure you check out yesterday's lecture over want versus need because I do, I well I am getting some people who are kind of confused about the want versus the need in character and I've actually, um, I've put a link to a YouTube video that like really will help you with that and thinking about that. So check that out before you do that review um, if you haven't already. Um, and then I'll recap the screenwriting competition after we go over character in film. So that is our topic today's character. So I want to talk about characterization through Disney's Lady and the Tramp. And I really like this movie because my son has made me watch it like 15,000 times, but also because it was filmed in Savannah in 2019. So that's pretty cool. It is available on Disney Plus if you're interested. And if you've been to Savannah, definitely look for some familiar settings in the movie. And I actually include some at the end of this slide or end of this presentation. The Capitol Building, you can see it for Scythe Park and uh, the river. Not River Street precisely, but they show the Savannah River, which is it's pretty neat. Okay, so very basics in character, protagonist versus antagonist. So your protagonist is the character in the story that the audience will follow. So who are they going to root for, in other words? They're going to carry most of the story on their shoulders, and then the antagonist is the person or the thing that is going to stop your protagonist from reaching their goal. Your antagonist always has a reason why they don't want to want the protagonist to reach the goal. And that's important to remember that they always have to have a reason. So you can't just have a, a an antagonist just for the sake of having an antagonist. They really need to be in it. Okay, so let's read sort of just about Lady and the Tramp. And what I want to point out is this thing that I'm reading. All movies have this and it's called a log line. We actually will end up writing our own log lines for our movies, but I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. So, um, Lady and the Tramps is rated PG. It's a, it says, in this heartwarming romantic adventure, a timeless retelling of the 1955 animated classic Lady, lady an overachieving, pampered American Cocker Spaniel hashtag and Tramp, a tough but lovable, fast-talking stray, embark on an unexpected adventure and despite their differences grow closer and come to understand the value of home so i thought that that was a, a great log line sorry i didn't mean to exit out of that and it, it gives us everything we need to know about the plot okay so maybe you got that from the title but actually we have two protagonists in this both lady and the tramp are our protagonists so the key word there is that Lady and Tramp embark on an unexpected adventure. Right there. So another word for an adventure is a journey. So there we go. There's our story arc right there with our journey. Um, so there they are. There's Lady and there's Tramp right here. Okay, so again, the goal of the protagonist is to go on a journey and accomplish a task. So let's go back to that log line again to see if we can figure out what their task might be. So it says they embark on an unexpected adventure and despite their differences, grow closer and come to understand the value of home. So there we go. That's sort of a theme wrapped up in that too. So their journey to accomplish a task, maybe perhaps to find a home, they're going to guide the audience through the story and the audience is going to be rooting for these two. Ultimately, it's who we're going to identify with. So in, our, in your story, the protagonist will have an emotional obstacle and a physical obstacle. And indeed, that does happen with Lady and the Tramp, too. All right, so let's talk about the antagonist. And this is where we really come into the physical obstacle with this piece. So the antagonist in Lady and the Tramp is the dog catcher. Okay, so here he is. He's not supposed to be a nice guy. We're not supposed to relate to him. So... 
when we typically think of antagonists, we think of words like evil or bad, and it's accurate most of the time. At the same time, we need the antagonist to be somewhat relatable. Uh, a three-dimensional antagonist forces us to basically like humanize them, and we want that. Um, Gabby Gabby in Toy Story 4 is a wonderful example of an antagonist. I didn't include Toy Story 4 because I feel like most a lot of people maybe not have may not have seen that yet. Um, but definitely check out Toy Story if you can. Once we're back at school, I really want to watch Toy Story 4 with you two. So it's just it really it's just a great example. But Gabby Gabby's character is the antagonist antagonist. She really has this moment at the end that humanizes her, and that's the first moment where I shed tears in Toy Story 4 is actually when because uh, I feel bad for Gabby Gabby. So any movie that can actually make you feel kind of feel bad for the antagonist is going to be a really good movie. In this one, um, I don't know that Disney really makes us feel very bad for this guy, but you can definitely relate to him in some respects. Like, he's just trying to do his job, that kind of thing. Okay, so all stories can be categorized into three categories, and you guys know this is a review, but it's man versus man, man versus nature, and man versus self. Now, our protagonists are dogs, so, uh, but I really want you to think of them as man because they're, I mean, they're talking dogs. They're like, they're like an extension of a person. So really in this, we're dealing with man versus man because our protagonists are running from a man. Okay. All right. We talked about this, um, on Monday's lecture, but the haunting ghost is really that thing that is the 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 need okay so it's really talking about like psychologically deep down what is this what does this character need so it says we all need therapy to unpack our baggage from yesteryear your characters are no different they must heal the broken facets of their past to live a healthier life in the present the ghost is the most significant thing haunting them that's driving them to make poor decisions so, and we really need our protagonists to make poor decisions. If they all make great decisions, then we don't have any tension. We don't have any storyline. So we need them to make some poor decisions. Characters' personal challenges are often rooted in broken pasts. Okay, so this is totally true for both Lady and the Tramp. So this is a picture of Tramp. So Tramp is a homeless dog, but he wasn't always. So Tramp used to have an owner. But his owner abandoned him after the um, the man's wife had a baby, and then they got rid of him because of that. And and really, that kind of drives his his thinking later on. And okay, so rights and wrongs. So all good characters are right about things, and they're wrong about things. In bad movies, as in like poorly written, the good guys are always right, and the bad guys are always wrong. But again, this feels shallow and empty because it's not realistic. So we are all not black and white people, right? We both have shades of gray. All of us have that. We're not solely good or evil. And I think we've talked about this in class too. But having your characters be right and wrong offers them depth, texture, and nuance. And that happens in Lady and the Tramp too. Okay, this is where we get into character versus characterization. So characterization is really just like what you would see on a character sheet. So when you give the character descriptions in a play, which by the way, you don't do in a screenplay, where you're not gonna have a page with character descriptions. It, but it's this kind of things that a, a person could tell by just looking at you. So, and it's the things that are direct. So it's gonna tell the reader that the char about the character. Um, for example, you might, if somebody, if you were to describe your character as upbeat or, or cheery, okay, that's a direct characterization. Um, you can also summarize personality in a line and then useful for first details. So for example, let's look at Lady and Tramp right here. Okay, looking at Lady right away. Okay, she's well groomed. She holds her chin high. She has on a collar. All right, she's well cared for. I think maybe by a wealthier family. All right, those are just like automatically the things I would pick out about her. Okay, Tramp. Um, no collar. He's a little scruffy. He might, like, he might be a street dog. Like, I think you could, you might can make that guess based on just looking at him. So those are things that are, are direct characterizations. Um, Lady is, has golden brown fur. She has a white snout. Um, 
you know, what type of dogs are they, right? Like Cocker Spaniel, etc. So those are all direct characterizations. Okay, indirect. So this shows the reader character, and this is really what you want to go for to reveal. So it's always more fun to kind of reveal these things about your character as you go along. So cumulative detail. So in this scene right here where we learn that Tramp has this shady past where he like used to have this wonderful family that gave him up, we don't learn that right away about him. That's revealed as the movie goes on. So it's useful to, for development. So a character's deeds and words add up, giving complex growth. All right, so let's move on to how do we show these. Now, I'm going to link, I don't have the link here, but I'm going to link it for you, this whole presentation about character. So you can actually play all of these videos yourself. This is my favorite one. I, please go and watch this one because this is how character, true character is revealed. And it is through choices. So all human beings make choices and, and make them under pressure. So your true character is revealed about those choices you make under pressure. The greater the pressure, the deeper the revelation. Um, and that is so true. So whatever, however you want your character to seem to your audience, show your audience through a choice that character makes. In Lady and the Tramp, Tramp has friends, two dog friends, that are caught by the dog catcher, and they are inside this wagon right here. And he risks his life and his capture by getting by saving these two dogs now they don't just tell us like wow tramps are really good dog blah 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 no they show it by having him rescue these other two dogs so it's it's things like that that happen that show us true character okay so beneath the surface of characterization so again characterization are those direct type of characterizations that the writer tells us she is young she has brown hair she is a pharmacist okay so like those things this is that's characterization character again is revealed through choices and again the only way to know truth the truth about your character is to witness him or her make choices under pressure to take one action or another in the pursuit of his or her desire all right that's all I have for you today but please go back Play these clips um I definitely would use headphones I can't remember exactly if there's any bad language there's if, if there is it's nothing really bad but I know some of you guys watch around younger siblings and some of the you know some of the scenes are more like action oriented um, in particular um, Hunger Games this is like one of the final scenes in Hunger Games so you know just use um, you know use your discretion as you watch these in front of like very young siblings all right I hope you guys are doing all right. And please, please, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions. All right. Bye.